Hi everyone, I want to check in with you today to see how you're doing. And I pray for you that you're embracing the truth of the scriptures that tell us that we are blessed and we are highly favored of the Lord. Um, so take that to heart and be encouraged today. I've been reading a book that I wanted to share some insights with you by the author John Ortberg. Uh, the book is entitled Soul Keeping. Uh, John Ortberg gets my attention early on when I'm reading uh, as he uh, tells a story about an invitation he received uh, to visit uh, someone he admired and followed and read some books. Even you know, as, as a young pastor, he was looking for insight and inspiration, and he, and he learned of this author, Dallas Willard. And then as he was pastoring this church in California, he learned that, that Willard lived in the same community, and so he inquired uh, for a, a, of a visit with him, and uh, he received an invitation from Willard. Um, of course, going into this uh, larger-than-life figure uh, that he admired, he, he, he was totally taken by the simplicity of Willard's lifestyle and the surroundings. He, his very humble uh, surroundings, uh, even his clothing, he is not what he expected. Um, Ortberg shares that during his visit, he was also surprised uh, by a remarkable characteristic that he saw in Willard of an unhurried lifestyle. And that's what I wanted to encourage us with today. You know, um, we're kind of forced into an unhurried lifestyle right now during this season of, uh, of uncertainty with the coronavirus. Um, we're going to continue to pray that God would arrest this sickness, and um, we pray for those who are affected by it uh, more so. But, but I want us to be reminded of, of, of the opportunity for us to take this time of this unhurried lifestyle, this intentionality of, of seclusion um, and not meeting with larger groups of people uh, to use it for a time of, uh, of, of getting close and leaning into the character of God and into the person of God. Several years later, uh, after entering into a very busy season of ministry, Orberg shared that he contacted Willard again for some advice on how to stay spiritually healthy. After a long pause, Willard answered Orberg by sharing this. He said, lean in and listen to this. He said, you must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. Willard continued answering by reiterating once again, hurry is the great enemy of spiritual life in our day. You must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. <laughs> During our present normal in our life assignments, we have many voices that jockey for our time and attention, don't we? The old saying that the, the will that squeaks the loudest gets the grease is not too far from the way we find ourselves operating in the daily task of our lives and of our ministries. However, I wonder how many of us have felt that after working and serving and going full steam all day long with meetings, calls, planning, or taking care of children or a loved one who depends on your strength and care, just going about our daily task, we end up our day with the feeling and the sentiment of, what did I really accomplish today? Perhaps Willard hits the nail on the head for all of us, we, that we must learn to, to live an unhurried lifestyle and, and create margin and space in our lives to live out of a place of peace and trust with God. Ortberg expands his thought of slowing down a hurried lifestyle as he shares that each of our souls need, needs a keeper that we are ultimately responsible for the condition of our own souls. Uh, during a seven-week sabbatical, Ortberg sought an audience with Willard once again later in life. And he was at a frustrating season in life and ministry that seemed something was missing from his, his ministry and his church. And Ortberg asked Willard that what, he, what he needed to do to help his church that he pastored to experience greater levels of spiritual growth. I think what he was really asking is, how can I, uh, as a minister, um, maybe for us today, how can I, as a, as a teacher, as a mother, as a, as a, as a, as a businessman, whatever you find yourself in a place in life, how, how do I experience greater levels of spiritual growth? Willard's response is timely and timeless for all of us. After a long pause, Willard responded by saying, You must arrange your days so that you are experiencing deep contentment, joy, and confidence in your everyday life with God. Now, this mindset takes precedence really over our desires to experience contentment in our adequacies, our competencies, our success, and, and circumstances of life. But instead, Willard contends that we need a total commitment joy and confidence in our everyday experience of God, that we are keepers of our souls. So honestly, I, as much as I agree with and, and amen Willard's admonition, I am convicted. 
in that that I'm guilty of living too hurriedly. Although I love spending these quiet moments in the mornings with my Lord, I can easily slip into the busyness of each day's events. And I find myself uh, that my desire to intentionally practice an unhurried lifestyle is often met uh, with uh, the demands of other voices, which are valid and need my attention. Uh, what I lack is uh, learning how to balance that if I find that those are louder than, than my time with my Lord. So I must realize that at, by the end of the day, I am responsible for my soul. Thankfully, we have a good shepherd, Jehovah Roi, who knows me, who knows you, who calls us his own. I'm thankful for Willard's caution that we are to arrange our days uh, to experience God. And I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul's encouragement also that he says that for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. It's my prayer that um, that you and I embrace this thought that um, that when we wake up in the morning, it's like, in, like we're putting on our clothes, but we're also putting on a, a, that robe of Christ. You know, when we're when we come to Christ, um, he, he, the Word tells us that He He places a seal on us. We become His, his own. He owns us. He, he He's wrapped in our lives. He's around us, and we are to be mindful that. Uh, that's not, not something that we turn on and turn off. It's not something that we take off and, and leave somewhere else and we go about our lives and we're kind of on our own, you know, and God's, God's far away. You know, God is he's with us. He's that, he's that present help in time of trouble. And so be encouraged to, to, to slow down. Let us live this unhurried and embrace this unhurried lifestyle and know that our Father is with us. And at any moment, at any given time uh, during the day, we can stop and just say, Lord, I, I, th I thank you for who you are. You know, prayer for me over the last few years, I, I love just the com communion and the, uh, the conversation and the community that I feel w with, with God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I, I know that they're with me, and, I, and, and I'm reminded throughout the day, it, it's not just that set time in the morning or that set prayer time whenever you find your quiet time with the Lord, but it's a constant all day long living out of, of, of a place of being clothed with Christ. I really feel like the Spirit-baptized community needs to be reminded of the, of the activity of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That, that you know God is walking with you, that He's working with you, that He's He's helping you care for your children. He's helping you care for your loved one. He's helping you in your daily task and your whatever work you find yourself in. He is part of you and part of that. It's not something that you compartmentalize in your life. So during this time of intentional um, quiet time and being alone uh, time, and maybe you're being able to work from home, I just encourage you to... to Pull up a chair and let Jesus sit beside you. Maybe that's a good way to think of it today. You know, let him have a place in your car when you're traveling. Let him have a, 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 a listening ear. Uh, let you be a listening ear for his voice and let God speak to you. Can I pray with you today? And then I also want us to agree to pray, to pray together for um, our nation and for our communities during this time. Lord, I want to thank you that you are a good, good father. I'm reminded today, Lord, of your constant care for your loved ones, for your people, for your those who know you, God, your children. God, you love all of creation, but Lord, I thank you that, um, our, Lord, as we respond to you, God, you are ever reaching for us. Um, and I pray, Lord, that as we go through this time of uncertainty with this, with this coronavirus, that we are maybe in, in more private settings, more seclusion. Uh, I pray that we would lean into you and know you, God, and, and maybe set some uh, order in our lives to revisit uh, how we're doing spiritually and how we're nurturing our spirit man. If we truly hold the keys to our souls, then we are uh, our soul keepers. Um, I, I thank you, Lord, that you are that one that redeems us but Lord, you have given us the free will to, uh, to embrace that, uh, Lord, or to or leave it or compartmentalize it or, or to, to abandon it or to embrace it. And I thank you, Lord, for those watching today. I believe, uh, Lord, today that we, we desire to know you. And I thank you that you would help us, Lord, to be the key, to hold the keys and be good keepers of our souls. We pray together for our nation today, God, that you would, um, Lord, arrest this virus in the name of Jesus. 
God, that you bring healing to our land. God, we humble ourselves before you, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that we would just humble ourselves before you, God, that you bring healing to our land. God, I thank you that you are, um, Lord, you're not um, anxious for anything, God, but um, Lord, you are in control. And we just thank you, Father, that you are a God and you are a healer. And we, we pray for that, Lord, for those who are directly affected by this virus, maybe as one is watching that is sick or want someone to, a loved one of someone that is sick need to be encouraged today, God. Help them to lean in, to know you, to hear your voice, and know what your character is through your word, that you are a healing God, you are a good God. Help them to be encouraged today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Be encouraged today and encourage someone. All right, we'll see you soon.